an invasion of our country. Um, it is, I don't think I can find the right words to describe how grateful we are for this support because for us, this is not uh, just a conflict, this is a war of survival. So, and we are at a stage of this war, we've been able to defend our capital, we've been able to drive the enemy out of cities like Kharkiv and lately Kherson. And the next stages, and we have to continue to liberate our lands because every day that this war continues results and brings more destruction, more misery, more deaths. Uh, so, of course, this latest package and the fact that it includes armored vehicles like Bradley's, um, it's another example of the American leadership. Uh, because you have seen how, for example, when uh, the European countries hesitate uh, to provide Ukraine with, for example, Patriot systems, when the United States of America shows leaderships and starts, um, makes a commitment to send Ukraine the Patriot air defense systems, the Europeans uh, take that as an example and do the same. So we are very grateful for this latest package. We are sure it will be used very efficiently by the Ukrainian armed forces. And of course, we hope that this is a prelude, that this is a, the first step towards Ukraine receiving uh, finally tanks, because tanks uh, and actually we know from uh, even the American military experts that infantry vehicles, Bradleys, they work best when they work in tandem with Abrams tanks. So um, for us it's a matter of survival and the next big stage for us is getting tanks and we hope that the next Ramstein meeting, which is scheduled now for January 20th, will be uh, the time when this discussion will be reinvigorated and will bring results. Yuri, what do you make of Vladimir Putin's claim of a Christmas ceasefire? Is that in effect? You know, this was a cheap There's no propaganda profit in trick. That. Uh, coming from a leader of the country, uh, we have lost count of how many churches they have destroyed since the beginning of this war. We have lost count of how many Ukrainian cities they have damaged. So. And we never believed Russians because they never deliver on their promises. We've seen that so many times. They said they will never invade in the next Crimea. They did. They said they will never invade Ukraine. They did. So we have no reasons, and our Western partners understand and see this as well. We have no reasons to trust the Russians, and we are on a mission. We need to survive. We need to liberate our land. Moreover, they've said that they will keep the ceasefire, but they have shelled, for example, Kherson just yesterday. Uh, on January the 6th, two people, two civilian people were killed as a result of that strike. And along the front line, the hostilities continued. So it's just another example that Russia cannot be trusted. It's another example that we have to persevere. We are determined to go ahead. And Yuri, thank you for being here. In just the 10 seconds I've got left, Republicans, some of them coming into power, may be uh, questioning continued success, assistance to Ukraine. What do you say to them? We, deep inside, we are confident that the broad bipartisan support of Ukraine will continue because we are confident that Republicans and Democrats, everybody understands what kind of threat we are facing as an international community, not just Ukraine. Ukraine is fighting for the global freedom. This is the freedom war. So this is not just about protecting some territories in East Ukraine or South of Ukraine. This is about our common values, and these are values that we share with the American people, with the civilized world. So uh, deep inside, we are confident that the broad bipartisan support of Ukraine will continue, and this victory we will celebrate together. All right, Yuri Sak, advisor to the Defense Ministry, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Griff. Thank Follow you for inviting me. Brand new numbers out on the state of American jobs and what they mean for the inflation crisis. Next.